First off, Mad Max Fury Road. Adam, we were pretty big fans of this movie, Loved right? It, yeah. Alon? Amazing. I always have to confirm. This was one of our favorite movies of the last decade, fair to say? Yeah. 2015. Actually, we don't do a lot of birthday gifts in our family, but I remember that year, Adam, you got me, I think, three Blu-rays. Yes. What were they? The Twin Peaks set. That's right. Mad Max Fury Road. Of course. And John Wick. I think also It Follows, possibly. It was just a great year for movies. Anyway, recently, George Miller and a bunch of the folks involved in the Mad Max Fury Road production were interviewed by the New York Times for an oral history of Mad Max Fury Road. And they basically revealed a lot of interesting information about that production. I recommend checking out the article. It's basically quotes from all of the different people involved. And they put it all together to give a story of everything that went into that production. So they touched on what's coming next for Mad Max. But before we get to that, a few interesting tidbits that were revealed about Mad Max Fury Road. First off, they were actually going to make this movie back in 2003. And at the time, Mel Gibson was set to return and reprise his role. And I'm a big fan of the grizzled old guy returning to play you know, Rocky Balboa style, coming back. Indiana Jones. And yeah, that was a great, great example yeah. there. <laughs> <laughs> Rambo. I guess I can't think of really any good examples besides Creed with Rocky Balboa. But they were going to bring the, uh, Mel Gibson back. And uh, apparently uh, for a little while, Mel Gibson was, for some reason, they figured he was a little bit of a, you know, you don't want to really work with him too much. <laughs> uh, and then he also sort of aged out of the role as time passed. But back in 2003, after 9-11 happened, they couldn't get the insurance they needed. They couldn't transport vehicles. So they couldn't make Mad Max for your road. George Miller instead made the beloved Happy Feet. And after that movie did really well, eventually he was able to get the funding for Fury Road. Anyway, they touched on what's coming up next for Fury Road, what's coming up next for Mad Max. And George Miller revealed that it is going to be a prequel film, something we'd heard rumors about. But it's going to be focused on a young Furiosa, which means if you were hoping to see Charlize Theron back in the role, you're going to be disappointed because they're going to be casting somebody younger to play her. So right there, what are your reactions? Number one, to the fact that we're not getting a sequel, we're getting a prequel. No Mad Max It's going to be about Furiosa. And how do you feel about somebody else stepping into the role other than Charlize Theron? Well, she was a big asset to Mad Max Fury Road, but I don't think she's what made the movie great. I think it was... Just a great story, great action, great effects. Every, mm -hmm. The whole world that they built was amazing. So I think there's plenty of potential, and I trust them to pull it off. Yeah, when I think back, and by the way, Mr. Weeping Dalek in the chat. First off, welcome back. Thanks for joining us here. He says Harrison Ford Blade Runner, Blade Runner 2049 is a good example. And that's right. That is a great example of somebody stepping back into their role. Alon, how did you not catch that one? Well, I was trying to make a joke. About Indiana Jones. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. That was good, actually. <laughs> no, I yeah. loved Blade Runner 2049. Uh, I agree with you. When I think back on Fury Road, I loved that movie. But the things I loved about it were the visuals, the story. I would say the characters sort of came secondary to mm -hmm. all that. So she was awesome in the movie. I love the F Furiosa character. But any window that takes us back into this world, I'm excited about that. He revealed a few more details. He basically explained that when they were making Fury Road, they came up with pretty detailed backstories for everybody in the movie, including that guy that had the sock over his head and played the guitar. <laughs> they have a whole backstory for that guy. But with Furiosa in particular, they crafted a very detailed backstory. They, the quote from the New York Times article is, Miller sought to answer questions about what the character's life was like in the idyllic green place. Why she was plucked from the group of women warriors known as the Vuvalini, and how she became the hardened warrior we meet by the time Fury Road begins. That sounds awesome. It sounds awesome, and they actually crafted such a detailed backstory that they wrote an entire screenplay for this prequel before Fury Road even shot. So I'm sold. So this is something they've been thinking about for a while and agreed. I'm sold because this is clearly not something they're just throwing together as an excuse to go back. It came from an organic place. 
Now, what else do we know about it? So number one, no Charlize. I don't know if you pronounce that as Theron or Theron. No Charlize. But they thought about bringing her back using de-aging technology. And then George Miller saw The Irishman. <laughs> and he was unimpressed with the results. So they, you, what did you think of it in The Irishman? I thought that it was noticeable that it wasn't really a young Robert De Niro. Mm -hmm. But I didn't mind it. It was almost noticeable in the sense of when somebody wears a costume, it's noticeable. Mm -hmm. So I just took it as he is meant to be young in this scene. They're portraying it that way. And I basically stopped noticing it 20 minutes into the movie. And it's three and a half hours long. So 20 minutes is a very small percentage of the overall movie. Uh, and what else do we know about it? Not a whole lot else. We know that the production designer, Colin Gibson, quoted in the New York Times article as, we discussed all the vehicles he built for Fury Road. 88 were seen on screen, but 135 were made in total. The next possible iteration, which is on the table, so this prequel, has even more. So if you watched Fury Road and thought the one thing that can make this movie better is more vehicles, you're in luck, Adam. Yeah, I mean, it definitely can. <laughs> now, when is this going to happen? There was a legal battle between George Miller and and Warner Brothers over some unpaid earnings. But that seems to have been resolved at this point. They've started working on casting. George Miller wants to make a movie called 3,000 Years of Longing before he gets to this one. That movie was supposed to start production, delayed because of coronavirus. But as soon as that movie gets made, next up is Mad Max. So it's probably going to be a couple of years. But Adam, are you officially on the hype train for this movie? Yes. Yeah, I can't wait for this movie. Like we said, one, I'm, I got a sock on my head. I'm playing the guitar. <laughs> <laughs> Flamethrower guitar. Yeah. Rich in the chat says, feels like beyond Thunderdome. Post-apocalypse porn is played out. So Rich is done with the post-apocalyptic world. But I'm ready to go back. I got, I got one more post-apocalypse in me, at least. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, I mean, this is a little bit of a different post-apocalyptic world than we get from other films because this movie does everything with practical effects. Mm -hmm. That was what was so mind-blowing about it, is it worked well visually, I think, because 80 to 90% of it was practical, and it was just super impressive. So I loved it. I can't wait to go back to that world. Just that scene where they all drive into that giant dust storm, yeah. and people start yeah. getting thrown into the air. What, a, what did he say, Alon? What a wonderful day. What a day. lovely day. Yeah, what a lovely day. I really want to rewatch this now. <laughs> yeah. Rich says, watch it over again. He says, ha ha, but I'm not joking around. We are going to watch it again. Yes. <laughs> I'm going to bust out my birthday present from Adam a few years ago, mm -hmm. and we'll throw that Blu-ray into our... I don't know. How do you watch Blu-rays now? You got a play, PlayStation. PlayStation yeah, one of the PlayStations will do the trick. <laughs> Any other thoughts on Mad Max, on Furiosa? I just can't wait to see a big production with practical effects because they, they're more and more rare these days, but so much better. Yeah, and I think I'm very interested to see who they cast in the role because they've got some pretty big shoes to fill. That character, Furiosa, became iconic. Just the look of her was iconic, and Charlize Theron did such a great job in that role. Whoever gets cast, it's going to be a bit like the guy who got cast to play young Han Solo recently. Oh, yeah. Big shoes to fill. It's incredible to say the role is iconic because it just happened five years ago. But I do think it'll go down in film history. 20 years from now, we'll be talking about Furiosa. And hopefully it won't be, yeah, Mad Max Fury Road was amazing. And then they made that spinoff and the franchise kind of died. <laughs> so fingers crossed.